Oh, hey, it's Polly McGee from Pilot Light. Join with my Pilot Light co-pilot. Zoe Coyle from Pilot Light. Now, I'm here to tell you, I am a raging success. Zoe, you? Uh, look, not today or yesterday, <laughs> but I believe there was a day last week when there Let was get success. the calendar out. <laughs> today in Pilot Light Unpacked, our very own little series where we unpack the big concepts that... We come across when we're facilitating and when we're reading and when we're talking to our clients that we like to unpack in our natural conversation to, uh, to just really tease out some of the things. So we've been talking about success and failure and we were going to make this video actually as two separate parts, but when we talked about it, it can't really, we never describe success without failure being around the corner and vice versa. So we figured that we would put it together in one exquisite, successfully failure filled video for you. Yes. I love it. So, Zoe, as you'll know, I've had a lot of thinking about failure in the last couple of years because I started a tech company which failed quite spectacularly in failing to get off the ground. And it made me really have a big think about what it was to, to fail and or what it was, what did that even mean in this world where we seem to only talk in the binary. So, had I been a failure or had I actually made a good call to get out before I dumped a whole lot of other people's money and then it wasn't going to take off. But what we feel like we have to only talk in these two things. So I think about it a lot because I think that we so often are trying to succeed, desperately stuffing away our failures rather than seeing failure as an integral ingredient in innovation and an integral ingredient in evolution of who we are. So failure is kind of a, the wrong way to describe it because it's so loaded there's so much freight in our culture in australia particularly around what failure is mm. discuss mm. well i would love you to talk in more detail about about your experience when you decided to close down that company because also and also i want to alert any of you out there you probably wrote an extraordinary essay on it which is on our website do you remember what it's called paul so they can find it uh no, Let's, no, 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 no. It's, it's in our, it's in our blogs. No, it's re it's really very beautiful. And then, it might just be called on failure, actually. Oh, how succinct! <laughs> That's a success. I wanted to, I, I, I wanted to talk about a quote that I heard the other day from Winston Churchill. Um, he didn't tell it to me personally. Somebody read it and then told it to me. Uh, and he said his definition of success was moving from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I Isn't love that, that? I, I really love that. And I think for me, so I've been thinking about failure a lot um, too, for I guess about the last decade. And, and my failures earlier in my teens and my 20s had so much shame around them, mm. but I just wanted to bury them and I didn't want to talk about them. And now, and I know this sounds a bit twee, but the truth is that every failure, that, that, what, what is that, that adage, you know, whenever a door shuts, a windows open or something. Is that from the sound of music? Another door opens door. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just a smaller space. You know, you have to crawl through. <laughs> <I'm all. laughs> Is there a mouse hole in here? <laughs> oh, well, that's a relief because actually climbing up through a window can be tricky. So what is it? So when a door closes, another door opens? One door closes, another door opens, yeah. Well, I I agree with that. I do. I think that, that my my great failures have all and it, look, it does it does sound like but have been immense gifts and sometimes mm. it takes a long time to be able to look back and go mm. i learned a lot even even the failures where i'm where i'm really not proud of my behavior mm. where I, I i don't believe i'm that person anymore i can look back and go well i learned the lesson mm. i learned the lesson mm. It's really tricky, isn't it? And we talked in a previous video about Carol Dweck and growth mindset and that idea that, that when you've got a fixed mindset, you, you basically don't allow yourself to fail. And you do that by not doing anything that's going to challenge you to make a mistake. So you can maintain an edge of excellence without ever testing anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that book. Growth Mindset's one of our mutual favourite books because it really gives everyone permission to, to do a lot of things and try. And I think this is where I get really stuck in the language of this because 
that idea that just trying and if you, you, you when you're trying you're not expected to have all the answers you're not expected to have all the skills because you're on some kind of a continuum and you're going to learn as you go so back to the failure thing because i think the unpacking for me around this very particular context of being in startups and being in tech world which has been part of my career journey for about a decade is that we talk like we talk a lot about failure and we're all like we've got our dicks on the table and we're like yeah we're gonna fail oh the money fail and then talk about it in our ted talks you know we all sort of like you know everyone kind of goes yeah well you can't you know you can't have a business without failing and blah blah, blah. so we do the rhetoric and you know in america there's all of the sort of the, the the legend of you'll never get funded unless you've failed a few times but what we don't talk about is that that process of failure the way it's contextualized as falling into this giant chasm and it's like it's catastrophic there are emotional outcomes that go with that and so anyone who's sort of experienced that and particularly in australia where we don't culturally love to fail in the states they do they're really a risk-taking culture when it comes to business here not so much here we love sporting heroes and we love success and we love hard luck stories and diggers and you know we love all of that sort of mateship but Failing is kind of not an option almost. It's like that doesn't go with, with masculine camaraderie. Now, as a woman in that world, you're just adopting all those behaviours because there's no other role models sufficient that we have a female culture of what it is to evolve. I think if startup world was full of women, we would have a real culture of collaboration and, and conversation and support. But that idea that, the, that in the failure, it's so finite, which of course it's not. It's just a step of evolution. But to have to then get out of that and discuss it and I don't know, I just, I feel like we, I'm just rambling now. Just, oh no, it's, it's all completely fascinating. <laughs> but it was an interesting experience because I was very clear on wanting to close that company down. I wasn't going to be able to make it work. And that was, so there wasn't, there was nothing other than a very pragmatic decision. What happened afterwards, it's like a clickbait title. What happened afterwards, click here to find out, was th click. just this whole dropping into a, I think probably a deep pool of shame that I wasn't that one. I wanted to be that woman that got that made it, that got the funding, that made a company go global, that did all the stuff, that could stand on a stage and say, hey, girls, come along behind me. You know, we're going to do this together. And I had a sense that I'd let down the sisterhood and I'd let down, you know, women in business, all of which was just like cray cray pant talk because it was no, there was none of that. And it was, you know, in lots of ways, as I said, it was a good thing because no one went down with me. It was just a single reverse phoenix <laughs> oh oh i, I love like that, that. <laughs> but but we still don't talk about failure what we talk about is failure from the vantage of success so we go back and we talk about you know, that thing that happened five years ago to get us to where we are now when we're on the stage with the piles of money scrooge me duck style mm. but it does make it harder i think for people to to go out and Get up and do it again because the resilience that you need to go oh yeah as winston chantra says you just move with momentum you can get really stuck in the lack of momentum mm. and we don't have great language or we don't have great mechanism or great empathy culturally for working with people in that mm. so when we're talking about success and failure in, in this part of the conversation i'm really contextualizing it in what we see as a material outside of us have we been successful in work have we been successful in life you know that's all it's all acquisition based have we got all the stuff that is the markers in the West in a capitalist society of, of, of making it? Mm. And, you know, of course we all do when we've got a roof, just having a roof over our head and food in our bellies in this world is success in, you'd, have, you'd say. Mm. Can we talk about success now? Yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about, but oh, actually one thing I wanted to say is I had, a, I had an interesting experience earlier the year, in the year where I'd put myself on the line um, and I'd written, an, I'd written a novel, a manuscript, it's not published, and I hadn't heard back from the person that I'd sent it off mm. to. And my brother, who is an artist, who puts himself on the line over and over again. Mm. And I said to him, uh, with quite a lot of gin and tonic sloshing around in my belly, I'm, I'm really f frightened of the, mm. the failure that feels mm. like it's just coming down the highway mm. to me. And I said, and I, I don't quite know how I'm to, to, supposed to prepare for it. And he said, I'm going to paraphrase, and he said, well, don't prepare for it. Just stay in the moment because you don't have information about what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And just know that if it does arrive, you can grieve for a bit. You'll grieve and then you'll get back up. Mm -hmm. And there was something so, I felt, 
I felt such a relief at that idea. Of course, yes, you can. And we will do, we're going to do one of these videos on feeling all the feelings. Yeah. But that idea of actually, you can get knocked down and then take your time to restore and then you get back up again mm. and, and give mm. it a whirl. But I am interested in talking about success because personally I feel, Paul, that my understanding of what success is personally has changed dramatically with every decade of my life. Yeah. And what I'm seeing in the rooms where we facilitate as well is, um, is a really interesting conversation around that. So I'm interested in how you, uh, how you define success now where you're sitting. And I think also if we need to wave COVID into this too, as we've just come through this moment in time where I think people have had radical definition, redefinition of what success is. But yeah, so for me, and I, just, I was just reflecting, so I'm just going to step sideways for a second and not give a direct answer, then I'll direct back. I was just thinking when you were talking about your manuscript and, you know, and, and I'm, a massive champion of this work. It's an amazing book. And so for me, I, I never understood that the feelings that were so intensive that because that, that, the success for me is that you wrote a manuscript and a really bloody good one at that, you know. And so what that made me think about is that I really feel that when I'm doing the things that are in my lane way, as Dr. Goodwin would say, I don't feel failure. So I write and I do creative work and, and I don't feel failure with them. If my book doesn't get picked up, you know, it's like, I'll self-publish. There'll be another thing. What I really felt failure in is the thing that I didn't believe I could do. So I think because I didn't really ever believe I was a CEO, I didn't ever really believe I could do it. In my heart of hearts, I always felt a bit of an imposter, but then I was imposter syndrome in my mind and I knew that was a thing. But it's funny, isn't it? So you, you hurt more when you're not so driven that you're just going to get straight back up and get back into it. So I, I think that is, I just so had that insight, which is why I stepped sideways to sort of Can I just step it. sideways with you before you step back? Is there a cliff next to either of us? Because No, wondering. we're dancing. <laughs> we're dancing. Ready? Boo, 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 boo. Um, so I completely agree with what you're saying. And I love that you said that because I've never thought that before. And, Neither have I. And you thought... you're, 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 you're spigot of truth. <laughs> I, but, so, but then it's interesting to add um, the layer of my experience of fearing the failure because mm. I know I'm a writer, but, mm. but I have wanted it for so long mm. that it has felt like, like, like just a, 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 not like a massive dream. Yeah. And so to put myself on the line and you know that I feel, I feel mm. immensely grateful for the experience of just writing it. And mm. if that's mm. all this journey is, I truly believe it's one of the mm. best gifts I've ever been given or given myself. Mm. But the failure was attached to that idea that because I'm such a wide reader and I have such clear sense of mm. what I think successful writing looks like. Yeah. And this goes back to the, the talk that we did uh, the other day around perfectionism. Mm. And so I know that I can't get it perfect. And what I write falls short of what I hope it to be mm. because I have these because I have an understanding of what I believe art and beauty to be, that failure was coming like a triffid, you know, to claim and get its fingers in my eyeballs and in my ears and so on. So it's, so look, I, you can step back now. I won't feel lonely. So. <laughs> but it's so interesting, isn't it? I think I'm going to, I'm going to continue to think about that revelation because that then that actually cements everything that we've ever been told about purpose and the depths you can find of resilience when you are in purpose because there's nothing that's going to get in your way mm. whereas it makes more sense to me that something in, like that you never really cared about that you weren't really there for that you can feel much worse because i think there's other shame that sits within that but the definition of success so for me now if you'd asked me at 20 i would have said it was all about a career, really pinnacle career achievement, pinnacle academic achievement, really sort of like showing the world externally in a concrete way that I, I existed. You know, this comes back to the search for essence I talk about all the time. Um, now it would be loving openly in a way that's really connected with everyone that I'm, I'm, I'm around, having time to spend on things like meditating and reading and being able to be in service without the pursuit of money attached to them, just to be able to have like the great success. I think to be successful is to have time and to have time at your disposal. You can do anything with, oh, what a gift, you know, what a gift. 
And I think the success for me on my deathbed will now and never be about material. It will, it will be about, have I, am I having a good death because I've loved well and I've connected and I'm at one and I'm taking off my tight shoe and I'm going to my next embodied existence or not. It's so, it, and you know, it feels so much lighter. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I really agree with that. I think for me, all of that, all of everything you said, mm. it's also success is about having peace in my life and peace of mind. Yeah. Um, so that's being in integrity, being able to look myself squarely into my soul. Um, it's also about recognising joy when joy mm. comes to me rather than packaging it up or overstepping it. And it's also success is about, so this is an adjunct to the time you're talking about, being able to recognize the magic in the small moments. Mm. You know, the, the small moments, uh, you know, like when you're in an elevator with someone that you've never met before and you make eye contact and laugh, mm. which happened to mm. me last week with a woman. And it was inexplicable. We just, we looked at each other and we just started laughing. And then we were roaring with laughter. Mm. And then I got out of the lift and I said, I miss you. And she said, I miss you too. And the doors just shut and I will never see that woman again. And it was this shining gift and it felt like life. Mm. It felt like mm. life and in connection. Oh, and so I feel that story in my heart. Like there's something about connecting with a stranger that reminds us that we're all that, that we're all yeah. connected and we've, which is that we see someone and we judge them. But I love that so much. A moment like that can make my whole day the best day of my life because I yeah. carry that. Like, I'm going to carry that story. I'm having the mirror neuron thing of like... Yeah. And then I think success also for me is about, um, about going deep in this life, thinking deep, feeling deep, connecting deep, mm. so that when it is my time to die, um, I will have gone as broad as I could. Mm. Mm. I, don't, I don't want to skirt along the surface and mm. um, just do the easy things. I, I do love that, that Brene quote, you know, we can do hard things. Mm. And mm. I think living the examined life mm. is doing hard things. And, that, mm. and it's not easy and it's painful, but that to me is success. Mm. And then, and I was talking to um, one of my children about this yesterday and she said to me, you know, what, what, what what do you feel really proud of and what six what you know what's how do you define success she said like that something like that and i said and look i hope this doesn't sound like hubris but i'm going to share it in the spirit of honesty i said well the thing i'm most proud of as my primary success is uh my relationship with mm. her father mm. so 25 years of mm staying inside love and choosing mm. love and yeah. evolving together. And, and look, there's no hubris in this. I'm also mm. aware that we've been really lucky, mm. but, uh, but we, we work at it too. Mm. And, um, and it gets better and better. Mm. Do you think that's valid? Yeah. And look, it, it's absolutely valid. And I don't see that as hubris at all. Cause when I'm asked, what's the thing I'm most proud of? And you often get asked when you're doing talks and stuff, people are like, oh, what's your greatest achievement? And I say, Every time my greatest achievement is being in connection with my partner for 20, now 21 years. And, and every time that a year clocks over, I see that as an achievement because to be in connection with someone in an intimate dance where you're together all the time and you're both growing and evolving, that's incredibly hard to manage. And so I feel that there's, there is such a, that, that to me is, a, is about that, like that's something I'm proud of. That's something I have great joy from. Absolutely. Mm. Well, I think, I mean, we could talk a lot about this. Mm. I think this is such an interesting conversation, the idea of success and failure and, mm. and that they're two sides of the same coin, mm. aren't they? And, and they coexist. And but they I, should I, be merged. I feel like that's the whole, for me, the real takeaway from listening to the things they're saying and thinking about my own mind is that if we truly aspire to be in presence, success is always in the future or it's retrospective. We're talking mm. about a set of circumstances that are fictional because they're how it's going to be. In the present, there isn't success and failure. There just is. So if we do aspire to live that life, to be present, to be in the small moments, to be with joy, to be in the lift with that woman, that, that's, mm. there isn't really success and failure in there. There just is isness. Mm. 
and the beingness. And those words are kind of redundant because they're always about external validation rather than what's on the inside and that who we are. The isness. Mm. I, I hear that. And it just, you just reminded me about, I just read this amazing book um, written by, his name is William Gayford, and it's about sitting as a sitter for Lucian Freud, the artist. Mm. And Lucian is talking about, uh, about, it's called Man in the Blue Scarf or Man with the Blue Scarf. And uh, Lucian is talking about creating art and the daring of that and the success mm. or failure of that. And he talks about um, the exquisiteness of daring. Mm. Mm. I, I love that. I actually, I actually circled it in the book and then put a little person sort of hanging on to that word. I love that idea that there's something just in the attempt. Yeah. Just, just, just the attempt, just the daring. Let's connect. Let's move forwards. Let's go further. Let's think more. Let's, let's mm. hold each other. Let's roar with laughter. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love that. I, I've loved this conversation. Let's Thank dare, you. all of us. Thank you. And I'm really, I think we might even have a part two somewhere along the line because I think mm. there's many things to revisit in this. Mm. Um, so many things, so many conversations, so many unpacked viands. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. it's unpacked viands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, it was a beautiful conversation. Thanks, Zoe. You are the greatest success of my life. Oh, and I love you very much. And actually, we are going to have a talk on friendship. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Because, you know, when we talk about our romantic partnerships, you know, one of my greatest successes is running this business with you, one of the people I love most on earth. So that, that's, you know, deeply yeah. humbling. Friendship, it's, that's a massive topic. I can't wait for that one. Me too. We're done. That's it for us. Uh, when are we going to see you again? In the next video. Oh, yeah. Oh, we will. See you in the next video. Video! <laughs>